Hey all, welcome to ShareTrack. This is Raj here. Friends, uh, yesterday I couldn't uh, record a video. That's why today's video is late. Uh, had guests at home for dinner and had a great time. Uh, but by the time uh, they had gone, I realized that it was rather late for the day to uh, do any recording. So I let it go. And this morning I found a really interesting question from one of our uh, subscribers or viewers. And I thought it was worthwhile making a video on this just to demonstrate how I think and get feedback from you guys about how you think because the very subjective question, it's about beam therapeutics. So with that said, let's get started. Welcome back friends. First, I will show you the comment the question, my answer, and then I'm going to elaborate on it because I thought this question is uh, typical of something that all of us feel about the various genomic shares that we hold, especially when those shares show some positive movement. Uh, on one hand, we want to wait as long as possible to get maximum gains. On the other, we are afraid that it's going to slip and fall. So let me show you the question, the comment first. So here is the comment. It says, uh, I need your help so bad. Do you think Beam can reach $1.25 next week and not drop below $1.21? And my answer was no one can predict that. That's why you need to decide next steps. Option are sell half and keep the other half, sell half and keep the other half with a covered call or keep everything with covered call. And another option is sell everything. So genomics is a non especially in a non-monetized non company, is always full of risks. So this is what I had uh, told him. I want to elaborate on this and just go through what is happening with Beam right now, both price-wise as well as their earnings report, and then give you my feedback for this question in detail. So first, let us look at uh, the Beam price targets by professional analysts, okay? Uh, the price target uh, is all over the place when it comes to Beam, some as low as around $19 or something for short term and some much higher than where it is. So if you take the average of all of them, you get a number that may or may not be relevant. It's in the 50s. Uh, so, uh, which means that different analysts with different assumptions are seeing Beam either go up or go down. So it's neither here nor there. So I've seen all of them and I don't get any hint from that. And um, one of the reasons why I would look at professional analysts is because they have a lot of resources, they have access to data that a retail investor might not have. Uh, they have models that have been tested for uh, price estimation and, uh, and they do it for a living. So they are professional, so their results are likely to be much better than someone like me who is a retail investor. So I always look at them and uh, I guess most of you people are also looking at it. So right now, uh, analyst price range is diverse. It's not clustered in one place showing a great deal of uh, certainty or confidence. So I would say that we cannot go by analyst price. Which one do you choose? Right? So um, uh, I think the short term, we don't have any clear idea where it's going. And in my mind, the things that can contribute to enthusiasm for the market right now, I suspect, is the EPS beat by 8% indicating better cost control and operations. However, in the previous quarter, they had an EPS beat of 24% and came in at $1.08 negative uh, per share against an expectation of $1.45 negative per share. And if you keep that as reference and look at the latest EPS, Beam came in at 1.22 uh, negative per share EPS as compared to an expectation of minus 1.329 per share negative. And as you can see, even though they bet the EPS estimate by 8.5, their EPS has actually worsened from minus 1.08 to minus 1.22. That is hardly bullish. Next, let us look at revenue. If you look at the last three quarters, the revenue has dropped from 20 million in the last quarter to 17 million in this quarter. However, revenue in Q1 was 24 million, Q2 was 20 million, Q3 was 17 million. This shows a steady downward trend. Does not put weightage to possibility of increased income next quarter if you had to go by the sequence. However, there is a statement from John Evans, CEO, in their earnings release, which is very um, illuminating as far as I am concerned. I mean, I'm not a professional analyst, but 
I'm trying to glean as much information as possible from whatever information I get in the public domain. So uh, John Evans says, this year, Beam has established an exceptional foundation for future growth, which means that so far they didn't have a foundation and now they have put a foundation. I would argue that establishing a foundation is the key uh, activity all along. But let us say that they have established the foundation this year for future growth. And it says with significant financial strength, a broad portfolio of differentiated base editing programs in large addressable markets driving towards clinical milestones and a fully operational suite of research, development, and manufacturing capabilities for precision medicine, precision genetic medicines. So now this is actually the pitch for any genomic company that this is what we have done or we are going to do. And uh, he further adds that we have made critical decisions on where to focus and how to prioritize our investments over the coming years, creating significant momentum in our business and portfolio. Now, again, this is a very generic statement. So basically, I do not see uh, anything major that would make me feel bullish. Uh, these are like uh, strong statements. To me, they seem like non-statements. I mean, this is what Beam should have been doing right from day one and should have accomplished. So maybe we say that they accomplish it right now. So uh, if they have accomplished this right now, that could be some basis for bullishness going forward. But how do we know uh, that um, all the work that needs to be done to position them for future growth is already here? So uh, that's the other question. So all this is in the backdrop of the viewer's question. Uh, should I sell now or should I keep it for growth? Okay, so I don't see there nothing new uh, in uh, John Evans' uh, statement to cause bullishness. I mean, look at the pipeline. Let us have a quick look at the pipeline, okay? So here is the uh, pipeline, and you will see uh, that uh, Beam 101 is for sickle cell disease and beta thalassemia, where already Zinteglo and Lowo cell uh, and uh, Exa cell are going to be uh, in place way before Beam 101 can come to the market. They are in phase one slash two uh, of uh, clinical trials. I don't see them monetizing this therapy in the next 12 months. So if any of you think they're going to monetize this in the next 12 months, please put it in the comment below. And next longest um, you know, progress is uh, shown here, this yellow line here for Beam 201. And uh, it's XYO. Multiplex CD7, CAR T4, AML, leukemia. So I I don't know if this is going to monetize in the next 12 months. If it was, I mean, we would see a lot of indications of that. So uh, if, we, if we look at the entire pipeline, it's not as broad as what we have for CRISPR. So, uh, and uh, only two of them are in clinical trials. There are two in end enabling. So basically that means there's going to be more expenses being put on 302 and 301 to get them across end enabling and into uh, phase uh, one slash two. And uh, we don't have any pivotal studies going on. We don't have any news of a BLA being applied. So progress is still uh, a while away from where we are right now. So what I'm doing here is I'm searching for reasons why the share price should intrinsically go up in the short term not finding anything intrinsic that is sure and convincing. We then look at the overall environment where optimism of lower interest rates and falling bond yields can help lift all the boats, not just Beam, but also CRISPR, uh, Bluebird, uh, Allogen, uh, iMatics, unless the company has got something inherently wrong. Like I would say, I would give an analogy of a, a hole in the hull. If there is no hole in the hull, the, the tide should lift all the boats. The latest earnings from Beam does not let us know resoundingly that there is no hole in the hull because revenue has been deteriorating in consecutive quarters and I showed before EPS has dropped compared to the last quarter. So when in doubt, what are the options, right? So the way I am thinking is that one could sell half and hold the other half. This helps book some profit and keep the cash free to dollar cost average on the way down. The other option could be one could sell half and sell covered calls on the other half to reduce cost of ownership and dollar cost average on the way down. The third option is one could sell all the shares and wait for wait with cash or move to another more promising counter. 
So those are the options that I can see. The choice will depend on your investment horizon, uh, your diversification of your portfolio. That will in turn dictate your risk appetite. So if you recollect in the recent past, there was a subscriber of ours who said that he had put all his retirement money into Ginkgo Bioworks. And I think his purchase price was seven and a half dollars or something in that range. And right now, Ginkgo is closing, I mean, closing in on one dollar. So I would say that for a retired person, the risk appetite should be very limited. Uh, and uh, they should look for more of uh, steady income coming in so that they can use that to subsidize their lifestyle. Uh, so for such a person, I would say that take the profit and uh, sit in cash or put it into something that gives you dividend on a monthly basis uh, or put it into an ETF uh, which uh, invests in bonds so that you can have capital gains coming in and also interest coming in. So there are all those kind of things for retail investors. Now, if you if you look at someone who is young and who's got a long investment horizon and willing to look at BEAM as a long-term investment, then the options open up further because you have a risk appetite. And if the share falls below uh, $25 in the next uh, 15 or 20 days, or, you know, in other words, the share doesn't go about $25 and it starts falling, uh, you can always say that, okay, I'm going to hold it for the next two years. I don't mind. And also, if you had done proper risk diversification, and uh, if uh, Beam is just a small portion of your portfolio, then you can say, oh, it's just a small portion of my portfolio. If I lose 50% of the value in the short term and uh, maybe 25% of value in the long term, it doesn't bother me, uh, then you're fine. Like, for example, I have got uh, around 600 shares of uh, Bluebird and 100 shares of CRISPR and maybe 2,500 to 2,600 shares of uh, Ginkgo Bioworks. And if, if those things go pear-shaped, I won't worry too much, uh, except for uh, CRISPR because there is more money in there. But as a portion of my portfolio, uh, genomics doesn't form a huge portion. It's been diversified into surefire things and uh, uh, risky things which can give huge returns. So I'm not too much worried. So if you have done your... Uh, risk allocation and uh, you know portfolio allocation properly and diversified properly not only within genomics but also within all the various sectors uh, then uh, you wouldn't have too much to worry about uh, this particular thing so the message basically is look at your risk portfolio how much risk can you take and operate within that and then you make sure that you diversify not only within genomics but also within sectors like uh, fast-moving uh, FMCG, uh, like uh, technology, like the FANG sector, all those things. So you have to have some diversification. So ideally, it's um, that's the way you have to op operate. But we all know as retail investors, we get carried away. And suddenly one day you look at your portfolio and you're all clustered in one place, which has been very exciting. And then suddenly you find that uh, the prices are going down and your portfolio value is going down. And probably your spouse is giving you a hard time for it. So <laughs> I've been through all of these things. I understand how it happens. So this is a long answer for your question. And I hope many of you would have found something to relate to in here. And put your own uh, comments below on what this particular user should do, uh, given the current situation. And uh, it will be really an interesting read. It will be illuminating for me also. So with that, my friends, I hope you guys enjoy your holiday weekend. My wife has taken a few days off and it's a very long weekend for her. And we also have this uh, festival of lights, Diwali. So it's a lot of festivity out here, meeting people. Last night was a dinner with uh, a family friend whom I met after a long time. So it's a time for reconnecting. It's just like Christmas. So uh, I'm going to be a little bit uh, uh, late in releasing some videos here and there, but I'm going to make sure that we have a video every day. And of course, I'm going to meet with Sandeep again uh, on Sunday over Zoom and uh, we'll have a good time and probably he may even visit us. I don't know. Depends on how his uh, uh, his schedule is at home. And of course, he's much far away from where I live. He's on the west end. I'm on the east end of Toronto. So we'll see. We'll keep you posted. With that said, my friends, I'd like to end this video here. Have a great day, a great weekend. See you soon. Bye for now.